It's the first cook on the new Series 3 Big Joe, and today I wanted to make something I've never made before. It's gonna be delicious. We're gonna make some meat candy. Let's get into it. What's up, barbecue fans? Welcome back to the patio. My name's Jake. You're watching Roman Cook. Today on the channel, we're making something I've never made before. I've got a big old piece of chuck roast, and we're gonna make some burn ends out of it, commonly referred to as poor man's burn ends. Either way, I think they're gonna be delicious. Before we can do that, we've gotta christen this bad boy and get it fired up. Just like that, we've got the Big Joe started. We're up to just over 400 degrees, so I'm gonna shut it down. Now, this is the first cook. I did take a vacuum and vacuum everything out, but what I'm gonna do for this first cook, I'm gonna let it run for about 30 minutes before I put anything on it, but I am gonna keep it around 225. I'm gonna close everything down and start to lock in my temperature. Um, I am going to put in the rest of the slow roller and the rest of the components and what I'll do is I'll bring you back in about 30-45 minutes when we put on the food. So if we look at our chuck roast here, this is three and three quarter pounds. It's a big old piece of meat. Last night I pulled this out of the package, put it on this rack and no trimming necessary with this cut of meat. I had some leftover Franklin's brisket spice. This is just straight salt and pepper. I put a nice healthy coating of this all over. And then I broke out my Franklin's barbecue spice and I put a nice thick coating all over. And then we put it on the rack and we put it in the fridge for about 16 hours at this point. So nothing left to do except for get it on the Komodo Joe. Now, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna break up my new toy here. This is the, the Quad X Pro from Chef's Temp. And uh, I actually have a whole bunch of cooks going on right now, so. <laughs> We're gonna break this out so I don't have to worry about the temperature of my meat. My meat, but we've basically got four channels here, and we've got a little little remote. Super simple. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get out my probes here. So I'm gonna get out one probe here, and I'm gonna get out our pit probe so I can monitor my temp. Now this comes with some colors. We don't need to worry about those today. I just want to put this inside the meat, and then. We're in set it and forget it mode. And make sure this is right in the center. I'm gonna use my finger, just guide this in. There we go, right in the center. And then what I'm gonna do is the way this one works is you've got, you just put the, the probe, whichever temp you're gonna use, and we're gonna use our pit probe. And this will give us grill temp. And you just use one of these clips, right? Put this guy in here, like so. And it just sits right on a rack. So we'll throw this in here. All right, you know what? I gotta put my racks in first. So let's put the rest of this guy together now. So you know, while we're off camera here, we put the slow roller in, we put our divide and conquer system on top. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to put in our 14 inch drip pan, put in our grates. We'll take our grate level temp. We'll set that up back here. Put our chuck roast there. So what we'll do is we'll put grate up top or on the left and then I'll put chuck on the right. Close this guy up. I'm gonna see if I've got batteries in this thing. So when you get this out of the box, you're gonna need yourself a screwdriver, just a Phillips. Took that guy off. There we go. And for our remote here, you just open this up Open this, push down on that. This slides out. Just like that, All right? My hands keep getting in the way, but this little slides out right there. Not sure if that'll come across on camera, but you can see that our grate level is 258 and our truck roast is at 39 degrees. 
Really hard to show you this on camera, but all we're gonna do is we're going to hit our set button and we're gonna set our high for our meat. I'm not too worried about that. I'm gonna set it at 200 just so it doesn't beep at me and annoy me. And then our pit temp, we don't actually have to do a low temp. We can do a high temp for our pit. And I'm gonna set that at 275. You can hear it start beeping because it went beyond it, but we don't have to worry about that. So now that our truck roast is on, there's not a lot to do. We're just gonna hurry up and wait. Now, I did put in some oak chunks and actually one oak chunk and a couple cherry chunks that'll mix up our flavor for a little bit. I decided to cook this as one big roast until it gets up to temperature. And then what I'm gonna do is I will cube it and we'll make our burn ends, but I wanted to keep everything together. I've seen it done both ways. I have not made these either way, but I figured I'd just start with it all together and see how they turn out. I'll bring you back a little bit. So we're at six and a half hours in. Let me bring you up to speed. For the first couple hours, I just ran a 225. And then as it started to get some color on it and build up the bark that I was looking for, I bumped it up to 275 and it's been sitting there for probably about three hours. Uh, maybe not quite three hours, maybe two and a half hours. It's looking delicious. Uh, if I look at our temp right now, we are sitting 168. So we're in good shape there. And real quick, just so you guys are aware, if you're gonna run a great level temp probe, you're gonna be 25 to 30 degrees higher than the dome, right? So if you're cooking off the dome, just to kind of give you a reference, if you're used to cooking off the dome and you go at 275, don't be alarmed if, you, if your grate level is you know, 305. That's, that's normal, right? We're close to the fire. But anyhow, this is looking absolutely delicious. We've got a pocket full of goodness right in the middle there. This just started to separate. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make ourselves just a little bit of a braising liquid. And I'll show you what inspired this video. I was in a meat shop and I just happened to do a double take. And here was this hardcore carnivore burnt end sauce. Just add meat and I read the back of it. And it said, uh, you know, it's formulated specifically for meat candy and our sauce will make the best damn burn ends you'll ever put in your mouth. And I was like, all right, when someone makes a claim like that, I gotta try it out. So I'm sure this is delicious on its own, but I'm not sure how thick it is yet. Ooh, it is a little thick, let's see. Maybe it's just the top. We'll give her a little chic. It's thick, it's thick. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thin it out a little bit for our, our braise here. I didn't think this one through. <laughs> Not too bad. So I've got a little bit of beef broth here. Or well, this is stock, I didn't have any broth. Put some of that, that's about 50-50. I'm gonna put a, just a little bit of apple cider vinegar in here, just to help break down the meat a little bit more. Not too much on that. Let me give this a shake and see where we're at. Not too bad. Smells good, I'm gonna put a little bit more of this in there. We're gonna, we're gonna add a bunch more when we make these into burn ends. All right, that's what we're looking for. What we're gonna do here is we're just gonna, I got double pieces of foil here. I'm just gonna pour this all over top. Might as well use it all. And like I said, we're gonna take this and we're gonna put it in with our burn ends anyhow. And I don't, I'm gonna make this fairly tight. I don't want to, um, I don't wanna have a bunch of extra 
room for steaming. We're just gonna use all that sauce to braise this up. Just trying to make sure we keep all of our sauce all around the meat here. That's what we're looking for. So I'm gonna pack that tight. We're gonna let this go for about an hour. We're still running at 275, we'll leave it alone. I'm lying, we're gonna go up 25 degrees. So we're just over the line here up top. I'll bring you back in probably an hour, hour and a half. We're gonna be somewhere around 205. We gotta feel for probe tenderness and then we'll cut them up and get on to the final steps. So it's been exactly an hour, ready to pull our soon to be burnt ends off. Oh yeah, smells delicious. Now the big thing here is, is that we don't want to lose any of that juice. Almost coming apart already. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to slice these guys up. Get that out of our way for a sec here. Now this guy is quite thick. So we're going to probably cut our cubes like so. and then cut them in half. Now there's some natural seams of fat, so that just came apart like that. I'm gonna leave them just like they are. Same with this guy, same with that piece. Great color, great smoke ring. That's the one thing I like about cherry. It puts a nice red on things. Cut these down like so. Now the one thing with chuck roast, you're gonna have a whole bunch of fat in places and you're gonna have to cut around it. These are gonna be delicious, I can tell already after tasting that. Wow, just gonna trim off, there's a bunch of fat here. Take that aside, like so. Look at the moisture in that. I mean, that is looking absolutely delicious. Last but not least, we'll do this last piece here. So really, we did not lose that much. I gotta tell you, that piece was so good I gotta have another one. Ooh, almost knocked over my rum and coke, that would have been terrible. So now what we'll do, we'll raise the walls here a little bit. Put these guys in here. And we will get out our sauce. Where are you at? Now we'll leave it nice and thick. Well, go big or go home. Should have brought out a, uh, a spoon or something. I just want to turn these guys over a little bit. Make sure we're all nice and coated. That'll do that. And again, I want to keep this pouch small so everything sits in the goodness. Now I'll go clean up my hands. We'll put this on here real quick. And we'll wait about 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes tops. Let's see how we did. Woo, they're hot. It's been exactly 30 minutes, and I gotta tell you, they do look tasty, but they are extremely hot, so we're gonna have to let these guys cool down. So while we let these cool down, let's talk about the contest. So every video, I do a contest. So Thursday to Thursday, you have a week. If I miss a video, you have two weeks. But all you gotta do is you gotta be subscribed to the channel, you gotta like this video, and you have to comment with two hashtags. This week we'll use hashtag Kamado Joe, hashtag burn ends, and leave a comment below, use those hashtags, and you'll be entered to win a $25 gift card to appybq.com. And all I do is I use a random comment generator next week, and I'll show you who the winner is. And if you happen to be a Patreon member, it's only five bucks, I'll double it. So let's look at last week's contest winner to see who won. 
So this was the Kimono Joe Big Joe unboxing video and the hashtags were hashtag Kimono Joe and hashtag Kimono Cooking. We had 45 unique comments using those hashtags. Canadian coffee guy. This is another Canadian and it's another winner because he won very early on, like the first or second um, contest. So all you gotta do is keep commenting with those hashtags and you got your chance to win a bunch. And again, if you're a Patreon member, I'll double it. You'll win $25 gift card. Uh, you're in Canada, so I can't give you an at, at BBQ gift card. I'll give you the same one as last time. I've already got your email address. So Canadian coffee guy, your comment was, I have had my Big Joe 3 for almost a year now and love it. Can't wait to see how you enjoy it. Kamado Joe, hashtag Kamado cooking. Let's get back to the video. So they've cooled off. I've put them on here just so I didn't have to clean my cutting board one more time. But let me tell you, they look absolutely delicious. I mean, look at that color. Nice and tender. You can just see them falling apart as you squeeze them. A couple of them are still quite hot still. I think that one's got my name on it right there. I mean, look. Beautiful color. Has a big piece, but oh so good. <laughs> well, well worth the time and effort. I'm actually surprised. Never made them before. And I, you know, some people are like, ah, oh, they're not really burnt ends. They still, they've got some of that chuck texture and they do. But man, when you hit them right, there's a couple here that could go a little longer. Lots in here. Still melting in your mouth. Now it's got a little bit more texture than a traditional burn end does. Let's talk about this sauce real quick. Love the color. Flavor's really good. The only thing for me is it's a little bit on the sweet side. I don't quite want it that sweet when I have a barbecue sauce. And the first ingredient on this is like infused sugar or something. I can't remember the terminology they use, but it is a little sweet. Sweeter than I would like it, but I don't eat a lot of sweet things. I don't do a lot of desserts, just not my thing. So you may be perfectly fine with this. I, I'm still gonna enjoy it, but it is on the edge of being a little too sweet for me. Other than that, the flavor is really, really good. Super happy with the way these turned out. If you've never tried these before, I think you gotta give them a shot. Something different, it's a treat. If you're having a bar barbecue, having some people over, this is a, something they probably haven't had before, or maybe just wanna spoil yourself. Whatever you wanna do, I'm sure you're gonna enjoy it. As always, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, do so below. Don't forget the contest. I'll see you soon.